trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night, but that's all right. Cause I know Jesus, he will fix it. Ah, wow. Trouble in my way. I, I have to pray sometimes. The trouble's in my way. I have to pray sometimes. I lay awake at night. But that's so right. Cause I know Jesus, he's gonna fix it. After all, trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. But that's all right. Cause I know Jesus. He's gonna fix it after a while. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanking the Lord for Jesus. Huh? Thanking the Lord for the one who can fix it. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You are the one, oh God, one and only true and living God. You are able. You are able to fix it, Lord, to fix it. Any kind of trouble that we face, you are able to fix it. You are able to turn it around. Ah, You are able to turn it around. You are able to make crooked paths straight. You are able, well able, to fix it, Lord. Whatever we need fixing, you are able. We are thankful. We are thankful today to serve a God who can fix it. Praise God. Praise God. Well, happy greetings to you this evening in the name of Jesus. As my mother would say, my, what a privilege it is to come your way to tell you the good news that Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. We, we do count it a privilege and an honor to come your way tonight and just spend some time in the Word. Thank God for the opportunity to just get in the Word of God and 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 just feast. You know, this this a, it it really says something about those that want to come and learn of Him. He said, those that are tired and wore out, and I'm paraphrasing, you know. Those are tired and war. He said, Jesus said, come to me. Come to me. Learn of me. He said, I'm meek and lowly. He said, in me, you're going to find, yeah, broke about high. He said, you're going to find rest for your souls when you come from me, to me. And that's what this is about. Bible study time is just to set some time apart and just get in the word and get what you need. So you could be strengthened and encouraged in the things of God. So you could be strengthened and encouraged in living this life the way God has called you to live it. And so we're going to get into the word tonight. Praise God. Thanking God for Bishop Roy. I, I see your own. Thank God for, for you and, and all of your labor. I, I tell you what. Everything that I've been able to participate in and, and partake of that God has been putting in you, I'm just thankful. I'm, I'm so thankful for the gift of God that is in you. And want to take the time to acknowledge Revival Center House of Prayer, Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's, a, um, it's, the, uh, it's, um, it's under the umbrella of Mother Tucker Ministries and, and our, our leadership there, Pastor Regina Tucker is there and an associate pastors uh mom we call mom and dad brian thank god for them and their labor elders uh ap tucker and elder 
Rodney Jones. We just thank God for the leadership God has placed in the house there. And, and we don't take it lightly. We don't take it lightly. When God has placed you in leadership, there is more accountability. When, when you step up to, to that place and say, yes, Lord, there's an accountability. It's not like a political leader. It's not like, you know, the leaders of the world even. There's a more accountability before God on how we, as those that are gifts, you know, that, that Jesus said he gave gifts to men. And these gifts are for the edifying of the body, of his body, of his church. That's what this is about. This is about edifying his body. So not getting it twisted. It ain't for you to make no name of yourself. It's for us to lift up the name of Jesus. It's, it's for us to equip the saints so that they can be strengthened in going out and doing the work of the ministry. The work of the ministry. Visiting the sick. Visiting those in prison. The work of... Reka Shabbat. I want us to get a handle on what we're here for. What we are here for is to lift up and exalt the name of Jesus. And if our leadership is not leading you to Jesus, that's a problem. That's a problem. If you're under leadership that's not leading you to lift up the name of Jesus and they're teaching you how to praise them, that's a problem. That's a problem. And we never saw that with Mother Tucker. You know, she was apostle. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, she operated in all of the ministry gifts. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. You couldn't miss her. You couldn't miss her. So we were up under honorable leadership. We were trained. We were trained that this is about the Lord's business. We got to be about his business. This is not about promoting yourself. So God help us to stay in that vein of humbling and keeping ourselves humbled under his mighty hand and, and submitting our gifts to the Lord, you know, so that he can use us. God has gifts in the house, gifts of, of ministry of helps. We, we thank God for, for the Dixons that are in the house, Christina and Sparkle and, and, and those that have stepped up and, you know, just, just making their gifts be made known. Those ministries of help, it's important. We, we all working together. We all fitly joined together so that we can be about our Father's business, keeping each other encouraged in the faith. That's what this is about. This is that's what this is about. So I trust that you'll be encouraged even the more. I just trust that this will be a time you will be strengthened and encouraged to get through the rest of your week. Praise God. So we're going to go to the word and this, we're going to go to um, James, the, the first chapter. And I'm going to read a little bit. Father, I thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord. We don't take it lightly to be able to come together and fellowship around your word, Father. We don't take it lightly, Father. Give us eyes to see. Give us ears to hear, Father, what you would have for us tonight so that we could be strengthened and encouraged in the doing of your will. That's what it's about. Strengthening and encouraging us in the doing of your will, Father. And we'll give you all the glory, all the honor, because it's all yours anyway. So we are thankful tonight. Thank you, Father. So yes, we're going to go to James, the first chapter. And I'm going to read a little bit. Um, just just bear with me if you go with me. James, the first chapter. It says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which were scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. 
but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For that, for he that wavered is like a wave of the sea, driven with the winds and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. I just want to just take a little time and just talk about, I remember asking the Lord some years ago, I was, I was studying in, this, in, in the book of James, and I remember asking him about the part where it says, count it all joy. And I remember asking the Lord, how do you do that? How do you count it all joy? You know, and this thing with patience, patience, I'm like, oh, I don't like patience. And I remember the Holy Spirit rebuking me one thing. He never really answered my question on how you count it all joy. But that thing about patience, I remember getting an open rebuke about that. And he told me, you better make patience your friend. He said, I'm not cold about it. And stop treating her like she's your enemy. Make patience your friend. And I'm telling you, that changed my whole attitude when it came to trials. When it came to the troubles we face in life. You know, the, the troubles. Jesus said it like this. He said, in this, in this world, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have troubles. He said, but he didn't leave it there. He said, but be, be encouraged. Be of good courage. I have already overcome for you. So we can't think it's strange. That the scripture tells us that too. Don't think it's strange when you come into to these different types of trials and, and, and tribulations. Don't think it's strange. He said, because the trying of our faith is working patience. And when we're letting patience have her perfect work in us, then we're going to be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That's a goal. That's a goal. Peter talked about our, our, our faith is more precious than gold. You know, we think of, boy, if I just had, if I just had somebody else's money, Oprah's money or or ER, whoever, you know, if I just had they Bezos money, if I just, I wouldn't have any problem. But let me say this about that. I know one thing, you can have poor people problems or you can have rich people problems. So yeah, pick your problems, <laughs> but you gonna have problems when it comes to money, okay? But pick your problems. God wants us to be really sober in the midst of a drunk world. We live in the midst of what's called a crooked and perverse generation. But we're called to shine as lights in this dark, perverse generation. We're called out, rekabasha, out of darkness into this marvelous light. We're to be shining in this dark world. So when we're facing tribulations and trials and People on our jobs are clowning for no particular reason or somebody cutting us off in the traffic and, and, and people, and we're just looking at all of the stuff that's going on, all of the, it's it just a lot. It's, it's a lot. That's what the uh, word gets tickled when I say that. It's a lot. It's, it's, it's a lot going on. It's, it's just a lot, you know, and we don't have to look for, you know. So I opened up with that little song, Trouble in My Way. I have to cry sometime, trouble in my way. I got to pray sometime. I lay awake at night sometime, but that's all right. He shall not blind because Jesus is the one who can fix it for us. When we turn to him, when we turn our face toward him, when we keep our eyes on him, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. I didn't start this good work in me. You didn't start that good work in you. It's the Lord that started that work. He started that work. And he is faithful to complete it. He is faithful to complete it. So when we're going through these things in life, 
you know, we're told, don't think that it's strange. We, we, we look at trouble and we think, oh God, what, you know, what did I do? And that's the other part. James says, if you lack wisdom, I, 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 when I read that in the context of it, you know, he comes out of that, he says, count it all joy when you fall into these, when you come across these kind of trials. He said, count it all, count it all joy. But then he goes on to say, if you lack wisdom. And one of the things that trials and tribulations do is it makes us start questioning things. Lord, what did I do? Or, or, or what, have, you know, did, did I do something? Did I, you know, I, we, we have all these questions. But we need to know what questions to ask. We need to know how to ask. That's why we need wisdom. That's why we need wisdom. We need to know, Lord, did I open up a door? You know? Or is this a, this is this could be an effect of somebody else that you know when we're when we're up under authority, there are some things that happen in our life that's because of the authority that's in our life. It's a lot of people that have, that have experienced uh, things in their house because the authority, the parents were not competent, and it caused the children to have to suffer needlessly. Because of the authority that was in that house. So trouble was in that house because the authority was abused. Okay? So there are certain things that happen in this life, on this side of life, that is because of the misuse of authority. Okay? So that can invite trials or invoke trials and tribulation. And then there's another thing. There's something in me. That God wants to come after. That's causing me. To open up the door. For certain temptations and things to come. And, and, and trials. So I, he's coming after that. So, so in the course of that. When I look at these troubles. When I look at these trials. The first thing that I need to do is. Lord give me wisdom. Just stop. Stop a minute. And say Lord give me wisdom. Help me to understand what is this about? You know, I, I know you want to get something to me from a, you said, you want to get something to me or get something out of me, but you want to do something in the midst of this because you have promised that if I love you, you're going to work out everything for my, you said, you're going to work everything out for my good. The, the criteria on that. He says, if you love me, you are the call. We got to know who we are. We are called out. I said that earlier. We're called out of darkness into this marvelous light. We are a chosen people, a royal priest. Come on, work with me, saints. This is who we are. So we can't forget who we are just because trouble comes. We can't forget who we are. You know, and if I love him, and I'm the call by him. He has already said he going to work it all out for the good. So when I look at these troubles and when they come, and I can count it all joy because I know, okay, God is trying to get something to me. He's trying to get my attention. Okay? I need to draw closer to him. I need to draw. This is a time I need to draw closer. I need to get closer to him. I need, I need to ask for wisdom. I need the wisdom from above. Because there's a wisdom that's operating in this world that's not of God. And it's, it'll make me do some stupid stuff out of retaliation. Because of people that have been being used or whatever. Then I want to do things and take it in my own hands and do it my way. or what, and Then I'm going to make it, it's going to be messier when I get through. Yeah, my flesh is going to get a little bit of glory out of handling my way well I'm just going to give them a piece of my mind or I'm just going to tell them about but when I do it God's way when I do it God's way when I take the time to wait wait on him let patience let patience have her perfect wait wait on the Lord wait on him just stop a minute and, and get out of the drunken place where I'm, Lord, I don't know why you letting this happen. We go into all of this panic. We go into all kind of, just stop. This is what I want, I, I, I want us to, to get tonight. 
And I know it's not me that wants it, but it's the Holy Ghost in me that's trying to get this to you. He wants us to wait on him, to, to, to make patience our friend. Make her, my, make her our friend. Because I'm telling you something. She going to make black hope. When she gets through teaching us, we're going to be perfect and entire. Wanting nothing. We're not going to be lacking in anything. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right when we let patience have her perfect work in us. So we can count it all joy because God is doing something. I heard somebody say he's working behind the scenes. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's working behind the scenes. He's doing what no other power can do. He's We got to have our faith secured. We can't be like that double-minded man. That when we ask God for wisdom, then we don't wait on him to give it to us. But we just said, well, he's taking too long, so I'm going to do this my way. And then, like I said, we go and we make it, we just make more of a mess, you know? Or the Lord tell us, okay, I'm going to need you to just hold up, hold your peace, hold your peace right now, you know? Because I'm fighting some things for you. You got to trust me in this. You, you got to trust me in this. Because I'm, I'm doing some things in you that you don't know. That you're going to need. You're going to need. Okay? So, trust me. Trust me. Calm down. Calm, look, calm down. <laughs> Let me teach you something in the midst of this. Let me teach you. Let me teach you about my meekness and my humility. Because when we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, come on, saints, walk with me. When we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, he exalts. So you being set up for a promotion and you don't even know it. Because you are all over the place and you mad and you want to tell somebody up. And God trying to set you up for a promotion. Because I'm going to tell you something. Promotion, according to the word, it don't come from the east or the west. It comes from the Lord. It comes from the Lord. Now, he going to use somebody. But just know, he put it in the heart of that person. When we look at, 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 at our patriarchs, like Joseph, Joseph, man, he, he, I marvel at Joseph. I marvel at how he went through everything that he went through and he kept his attitude right. I heard somebody say, your attitude will determine your altitude. You know, and that's something we have to come after. We have to bring our attitudes to the cross. Come on now. We got to bring our attitudes to the cross. We got to let this mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. What was that mind? It was an attitude that he had. It was an attitude. It says he didn't think himself, himself to be just because he was equal to with God. He didn't think it was something that he had to grasp. That he had to try to fight for and all of that. He knew who he was. I'm reminding you, say, know who you are. Know who, don't forget who you are. You belong to the most high. Daughters and sons of the most high God. Come on now. When we are confident in who we are in him, I'm telling you, we won't be double-minded. We won't be double-minded. We won't be questioning God like we do. We spend too much time putting God on trial. And I'm going to tell you something. He don't deserve to be put on trial. His track record is good. Do you hear me? Matter of fact, his track record is perfect. Okay? He is perfect in all his ways. Okay? So these trials and stuff that are coming, we ain't never got to question God's goodness. Ever. You ain't ever got to question God's goodness and his mercy. Because I'm going to tell you something. You can look back in your own life and see. He has been there. He has been there every time. He has been there. He has done what no other power can do. He's got that track record with you. But I'm going to tell you something. The devil is slick. He's slick. The way he comes, his most powerful weapon is deception. And if he can get us deceived to think 
that, okay, God, what me? Where did you go? He ain't gone nowhere. He's still with us. He's still with us. He want to teach us something. He want to, he want us to draw closer to him. He wants to, Reko Shobaha. Come on now. This is what time it is. I don't want to be double-minded. I don't want to be thinking, okay, I know God is for me, but seem like he wouldn't have let this happen. I seem like a, that's a double-mindedness. We got to come after that in the name of Jesus. We got to take this stuff to the cross. We got to, we got to take this stuff to the cross. Get that mind in us that Jesus had. You know, sometimes we're going to have to suffer some things. Sometimes we're going to have to, he suffered, listen, he suffered for us. But he suffered, man. He went and died a criminal's death and he was innocent. But he did that for us. And we can't put up with nothing. Come on, people of God. We can't put up with nothing without starting to accuse God. God is coming after that in us, even now, in the name of Jesus. Even now, in the name of Jesus. We gonna put blame where blame belongs. And it's either on the devil or on us, okay? Cause sometimes we opening up doors and just giving the devil, just, just, just free rampage to just come in and use us like he wants to and, and then think we, we gonna be all right or we gonna, no, no, we gotta close the doors. Close the doors, stop giving him room to, 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 to mess with us like he does. And that, that's, that's coming back to getting this mind, this mind, taking on the mind of Christ, that attitude that makes me, makes me want to say, Lord, I'll humble myself under your hand because I know when you get through with me, I'm going to come through pure as gold. I'm going to come through pure as gold and you going to get the glory. You going to get the glory. Don't, don't ever underestimate what God is doing in the midst of trouble. In the midst of trouble. This is why we can count it all joy. This is why we can count it all joy. We can estimate that this is going to be turned around for my, for God's glory in my life. It's going to be turned around because I'm going to tell you something about the God we serve. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob. The God that raised our Lord and Savior from the grave. Let me tell you something about him. Let me remind you of who he is. He is the only one that can take what the devil meant to destroy you and turn it, reka shabaha, turn it into a testimony for his glory. He's the only God that can do that. Buddha can't do it. Muhammad can't. Come on now. He is the only, and if you look back, you can see where he's done it. I know I'm a living witness. I know I'm a living witness. I told, I told one of my grandnieces one time, I said, I said, they say you, they say you have a, a you, you be hard-headed and get, make you a soft, give you a soft behind. I said, baby, I'm sitting on a lot of pillows. I've been so hard. <laughs> I said, I, I'm sitting on a whole lot of pillows. But God, but God has turned to the Yishan Abraco. He has turned it around. When I tell people my testimony, they go, no, you kidding. You know, no, you, you know, no. That's, that's how far removed God has. Reko Shobaha has removed my transgressions from me. That's what he did. Okay? So don't estimate what God is doing in the midst of the trouble. In the midst of the trial. Don't underestimate what he's doing. And we're going to have a different attitude when the troubles come. We're going to have a different attitude after tonight. Because the Holy Ghost is dealing with our hearts and our minds. And he's transforming us like only he can. Like only he can do by his spirit. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing right now by your spirit. In the hearts and minds of your people. Father, I thank you. You're growing us up. We don't want to be double-minded. Because we, because you said that that person, if you're double-minded, don't even think you can receive anything from God. My God, help us today. He said, don't even think you can receive anything from God. And I've spent time in counseling sessions with double-minded people. 
that want to that just want to plant themselves on blaming God. I've, I've spent time with you know, and 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 I'm telling you, I see what God has been using, what He's been using in their life to get them to where they are. You know, I, I, I've got, I mean, I'm, I'm a, I've been a witness in a lot of their lives and see what God has brought them from and stuff. So for me to sit down and let them say, talk about my God, come on now, this is this what I'm talking about. You want to sit up and talk about my God bad to me? As good as he's been to me, I'm sorry, I'm getting ready to shut this down. <laughs> I'm getting ready to shut this down because I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be like Peter. Peter said, when Jesus said, are you going to leave me too? And Peter said, where we got to go? What, where else is the, you, you shut up, black hole, you are the only one with words of eternal life. Where can I go but to the Lord? Where? Where? And that's the enemy's trick, is to get you to accuse God falsely. Because he knows you ain't got nobody else to turn to but him now. So then here you go. Searching for all kind of other answers. You now you like now you like that that not just a double mind, but how it described it. You know that you're like a sea toss. You know, and the Bible talks about we're not to be like the the the, the wind that that's tossed to and fro because that starts leading us to start looking for other kind of teachings. We start looking for other kind of teachings, things that are tickle our ears. Things that'll tell us what we want to hear so that we don't have to go through what we need to go through so God can get us where he's trying to get us to. Come on now. He's trying to get us somewhere. And that somewhere is to be a manifestation of his glory. We back to this glory thing. But God is setting this, us up because he wants to manifest himself through our lives. He wants to see himself in his people. He don't want to see you glorifying your gift and all that. He wants to see himself. The gift is for the body. The gift is to keep the body edified, to keep the body on course with what we're here for. We're here to be a light in the world, a city that sits on a hill that cannot be hid. That's who we are. That's who we are. We're holding forth the, 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 the light, the eternal life for a world that needs Jesus. The world needs Jesus. The, I'm going to tell you something. We're in a time right now that's so scary to where every everybody that's professing that they're Christian or but like Jesus said, if they say Christ is over here and Christ is over here, Jesus said, don't go. He said, don't go. We got to be more discerning now than ever. And I pray the spirit of the Lord increase a spirit of discerning in his people because this is that hour. We got all kind of places, especially on Facebook. We can just go and just eat of stuff that we don't need to be eating. I'm telling you, we don't need to be partaking of this stuff. But that's what we're doing, and God is coming after that. He's coming after that in us. We need to stay fitly joined to the head, even Jesus. Staying fitly joined to him. Not promoting ourselves, but promoting him. Lifting Jesus higher. Lifting him higher. Not our strange doctrine. I'm telling you this stuff is strange out here. It's strange. But staying. Staying near the cross. That's a safe place for us. That's a safe place. Near the cross. Be my glory forever. Be my glory forever. Near the cross. In the cross. Then Paul said, God forbid our glory in anything. And Paul had knowledge above knowledge, okay? He knew that he could glory in all of the, the, the law. And, and he was well skilled. But he said, God forbid that I glory in anything. Save the cross. He shut up like gold. And I'm encouraging you, stay close to the cross. Stay close to the cross. It's a safe place. It's a safe place for us to stay close. Because I'm telling you, there's no resurrection without the cross. You stay close to the cross, you're going to see your resurrection. You're going to see your resurrection. 
You're going to see it. But it's, we got to go through that cross. We got to go through that place called suffering. That place called suffering. So when these trials come, you know, and, and, and James describing them as, as different types, various types of trial. He said they, they, they're going to come. But he said, count it all joy. Count it all joy. And I want to say it like this, because this is the way the Holy Spirit's been dealing with me. Joy comes in the morning. We can go through our day and we deal with so much stuff. But I'm going to tell you something. When we face this with a different attitude, when we know that, okay, I got to let Jesus do what he's doing in me. You know, I can't afford to get thrown off course with this right here. This, this right here, I, 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 no, no, I can't give my attention to the, what, what this is demanding. Because it, it, it demands your attention, you understand. Because your emotions and everything are involved when people are attacking you or people, you know, it, it, it's very emotional. That's why we got to die to this flesh. Get out of our emotions. Get out of all of that. Get, get, get in the spirit. Get in the spirit. Do what we got to do to get in the spirit. Stay in the spirit. Because if we're in the spirit, the Bible says we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. When we're walking in the spirit, we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. We won't do what our natural mind is telling us to do when we're walking in the spirit. And that spirit is Christ. It's Christ. It's putting on the mind. Put it on the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. Who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But he didn't make of himself any type of reputation. You know, he didn't make of himself any. He took on the form of a servant. You know, came in the in 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 in, in, in the hum, the humility of man, mankind. He was born, okay, as a baby. He didn't even come as a man. He went through where he had to be potty trained. Oh, he suffered everything. That we could possibly imagine. He's touched with the feelings of our infirmity. He's touched with it. He's touched with our humanity. Him being 100% God. But 100% human. He's touched. He feels it. He knows what we're going through. So he's saying. In this world you're going to have troubles. Stop being all shocked about it because I done already told you you're going to have troubles. He said, but be encouraged. Everything that you go through on this side, I've already walked through it for you. Now you walk in me. You shut up like cold You live in me. And you're going to be all right because I'm going to get you to where you are manifesting my glory in the earth. You are man. That's what we were created for, people of God. To manifest him in the earth. So he could live in us. To will and to do of his good pleasure. I want to get to a place where I know. That whatever I'm saying. It's because he's speaking it through me. Whatever I'm doing. I'm doing it as unto the Lord. I don't want to take no glory for any good that I do. Because if it's any good. It's God's business. He's the one that's doing the work. I want to make sure I'm giving him all that's due to his name because we are to present our bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto him this is our spiritual worship so i give him my hands i give him my hands use my hands i give him my feet lord this shall be i just want to go where you want me to go lord. i want to go where you i want to do what you want me to do i want to go you know, the, the, one of the, the, the major pieces of, of, of artillery is to keep our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Knowing that wherever I go, I'm supposed to be proclaiming that the peace of God is ruling in me. So therefore, I'm bringing peace wherever I go. I'm, I'm declaring that, that my God reigns. I don't care what it looks like. My God reigns. My God reigns. That's that confidence that's going to have us stable in the midst of the trials, in the midst of the tribulations. So we're going to count it all joy. <laughs> we're going to count it all joy knowing this, that joy comes in the morning. 
Joy comes in the morning. The scripture in, in, in Psalms 35, it says, weeping may endure for the night. It says, but joy comes in the morning. I want a different attitude. I want a different attitude in the name of Jesus. I want to wake up in the morning and stay, and no joy is waiting for me. Joy is waiting for me today. I don't care what it looks like. I'm going to count it all joy. I'm going to count I'm going to count it all joy because I know God is with me. God is with me and he's working through me to will and to do of his good pleasure. So I'm going to have a different attitude now going through my day. I'm not going to be all torn out of, out of, thrown out of whack when stuff don't go like what I thought it's supposed to go. I'm just going to know God is with me. <laughs> God is with me. God is going to get something to me through this. When I come out, come through this, I'm going to be pure as gold. <laughs> I'm going to be perfect and entire. Wanting nothing? Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. He said he's our good shepherd. We shall not want. We shall not lack in no good thing. He gonna give us everything. He gonna make it made. He gonna make it make make it manifested through us that we are right. We good. We good. We good. We good. Cause we serve a good God, and we not gonna let nobody else tell us nothing different. My God is good. I don't care what it looks like. My God is good. My God been there. because so thought about how he been there. I said, broke about how he going to keep being there. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He is that kind of God. He's that kind of God. And he is faithful. He is faithful to bring us through. We're not going to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. We're not going to be. But Christ is over here. There's something new over here running to and fro. No. We're going to be steadfast. He said, Unmovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. Proclaiming, our God reigns. Our God reigns. He's working this all out for the good. Huh? For those that love him. And I'm one that loves him. I am the call. You remember who you are. You are the called. Huh? You are the call. Called out one. Set apart one. Holy one. That's what holy means. Set apart. Called out. Know who you are. Know who you are. Be confident in this one thing. That he that begun that good work in you. <laughs> he is faithful to complete it. He is faithful to complete it. So we're thanking God today. We're going to count it all joy. We're going we're gonna to wake up with a new attitude as we embrace each day. We're going we're gonna to thank the Lord, first of all, for, for waking us up. Hallelujah. I, I, I want to challenge you to smile. When you wake up, just smile. Because the Lord, yeah, because he smiled on you to wake you up. So I need you to smile back. He said, I'm like, oh, and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you that you have good things in store for me. Your plans for me are good and not evil. You have an expect, you have an expected end for me. A hope, a hope. Yeah, the devil had a plot against your life, but God's got a plan. And that plan is going to supersede every plot that the enemy had. Just know in whom you believe. Stay right there, saints. Stay right there. We serve an awesome God. He is awesome in all his ways. Perfect. Ain't nobody like him. Taking the time to just think about how marvelous his name is in all the earth. Ha! Nobody like our God. Nobody. Nobody. And we're going to keep him in his rightful place. Letting him be God. Letting him be God. Because he's God all by himself. He don't need nobody to help him be God. Come on now. He don't need nobody to help him be God. 
He is God all by himself. And we just need to keep him in his rightful place. Let him work it all out. Because he's going to work it all out for the good. He's going to do it. So we're going to let patience have her perfect work. We're going to make her our friend. We're going to make her our friend. She's going to teach us. She's going to teach us how to count it all joy. <laughs> Knowing it is him that worketh in us the will and to do of his good pleasure. Praise God, people of God. Thank you. Thank you so much for just being here tonight. This, this fellowship around the word. I trust you've been encouraged and strengthened in your hearts and in your minds. God is doing it. Ah, He's always doing above what we can ask to think. But he said, ask, ask that your joy will be made full. Ask. Sometimes we just need to humble ourselves and just ask. Just ask. And, and I thank God that he's got the answers. He's got all the answers. And we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Because we are there for each other. We are there to be helpers one of another. And when I'm feeling down, I'm going to need you to be an encouragement to me. And when you feel like Mother Tucker used to say, thank God we ain't all down at the same time. <laughs> because God has fixed it like that. So we can be helpers one of another. You know, there's no big eyes and little U's. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. And we need each other. We need to know how to have each other's back. We need to, we need to know how to do that in more purity of that. You know, just knowing how to treat others the way that we want to be treated. You know, I, I think about Micah 6, 8 a, a lot. He said, what does God require of us? What does, what does he require? He said, to, to, to love mercy, to fear God, walk humbly before him. Love doing what's right. Don't get tired of doing what's right. Because we're going to reap if we faint not. So I'm thankful. I'm thankful for each and every one. Praise God that just hung tonight. You know, I, I was thinking about Bishop. He was like, you know, because I, I was telling him, we, we might need to kind of cut it short because it man, the Facebook, the attention span is short. <laughs> you know, because you just got too much you could get involved in. Um, you know, he was like, no, we just want to invite, you know, the, the church to just take the time. Take the time, pull aside, and let's get in the word together. You know, so we can be encouraged. You know, one one to another, iron sharpening iron. Let's do this in the name of the Lord. Well, praise God. Bishop, you still there? Praise God. Um, I, I don't know how to invite you on. I'm sorry. I was going to say you want to get on and say something. <laughs> but praise God. I'm, I'm just thankful for you and, 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 and your obedience to start the Bible study and I just, I just thank God for you, and this is, this is just really a blessing, and, and I'm humbled to be, you know, a part of getting what God wants to get to us, you know, to keep us encouraged, you know, in, in this walk with him, in Jesus' name, praise God. Well, thank God again for everybody that stopped by, and, and I just, I'm, I'm, I want to encourage you to come by uh, the, the church. We have Sunday morning, uh, Sunday school at 10.30, morning worship at, at 11.30, and it's a 41, oh, ooh, I think I'm gonna slaughter this. <laughs> Praise God, I'm still a little high, y'all, bear with me. <laughs> Praise God, but um, we're at 41.05, can you put it in there, Roy, 55.01? 5501 West. Okay, then, then I got to get up here so I can see. Amen. 4501. Okay, I was close. West 55th. And that's Tulsa, Oklahoma. Revival Center House of Prayer. Subliterary of Mother Tucker Ministries. Thank God for the, the, the laborers that are there again. Praise God. We have Tuesdays and Thursday night food ministry going forth. 
We're thankful for all the volunteers that step up to make sure that things are in place, that the people that go and pick up the food, thank God for them, the volunteers. But thank God for those that are that are giving to the ministry, your donations. Pray we, we don't take it lightly for those that are continuing to be a support to the ministry. We, we are just thankful. We don't take nothing for granted. You know, and, and I, I just... I just thank God for, for, for what Mother Tucker stood for. You know, she didn't stand for, she didn't have any vainglory. It wasn't about the vanity of how many members you got and all. It wasn't a vanity involved in what she was doing. She did what she did as unto the Lord. And God, she knew God was her reward. And if we keep that attitude right there, I'm telling you, God's going to manifest his glory through that. He's going to manifest his glory through that. When I stop doing what I'm doing, seeking the praises of men, and do it as unto the Lord, like he's commanded, I'm telling you, his, his glory will be made manifest in our midst. So we're thankful to be able to serve. We're being in word, being in deed, our financial support, our, our labor of love. We're just thankful to be used by God. In Jesus' name. So be encouraged, people of God. Be encouraged. Thank you, everybody, for stepping by. I, I, like I said, I'm, it's hard for me to read and stuff, but God knows who you are. And I'm, I just want to let you know that I appreciate your labor tonight to, to stay put because I know it's a challenge. <laughs> it's a challenge, but I believe God is rewarding us just to sit down a minute. Sit down. And partake with him. So praise God. Praise God. Um, do want to say a word of prayer. If you have any special prayer requests, just send it in, put it in the in the in the um, comments. We, we will definitely make sure that we're praying. But we thank God tonight. Father, we thank you. Mm, my Lord, my God. We cannot thank you enough. For your goodness and your mercy toward the children of men. We are so thankful that we know you, the one and only true and living God. Ah, and we believe on the one whom you sent, even Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah. Lord, we are so thankful for your word, for the pure, unadulterated word that is able to save our souls. We give ourselves to you, O oh God. We give ourselves wholly over to you. Thanking you, Father, for the opportunity to serve you. Ha! Huh? My Lord, my God, it is truly an opportunity. It is truly an opportunity to live for you, to let you live through us, to manifest your life through your people, Father. Thank you, Lord. For what you've done even tonight by your spirit. Father, we thank you. We don't want to be the same. We don't want to be the same. We want to grow up. We don't want to be children tossed to and fro. Sitting at everybody's table eating everything that, that's not even edible. We don't want to be the... No. No. We want to stay in truth. Your word is truth. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We lift up those that are in the midst of the hurricane, Father. We thank you, Father God, that you have the power to, to, to command the storm to be at peace. And we speak to the fear. We rebuke fear off of the people in the name of Jesus. But Father, stir up their hearts to want to know you even the more. Use this time, Father God, to draw hearts and souls to you. For your glory, for your glory, for your glory, for you're not willing that any perish, but that all come to repentance. We call that forth even in our families, Father. The family members that are not saved, we're calling them in, in the name of Jesus. We're calling, we're calling you in. We're calling you in, in the name of Jesus. Come home, come home. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I thank you. You're, you're, you're touching bodies, Father. 
healing virtue flow. Ah, Baha, touching the sick, Father God, ministering provision to the needy, O oh God, touching those that are in prisons, O oh God. Lord, dealing with hearts and minds, opening up prison doors, Father God, bringing out those apostles, prophets, and evangelists, pastors, and teachers that are in there that they lost their way, Father God, but you, you, you're causing a, a revival. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. We invite your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thine is the kingdom. The power and the glory is all yours. It's all yours. And we are yours, huh? In the name of Jesus. Praise God. God bless you, people of God. Thank God for you. Just just be blessed. Peace and love be multiplied to all. Put some, like uh, Bishop said, put some likes down there, some loves. And, because God loves you and I do too. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. God bless. Amen.